thank you again for coming out. I wanted to get a chance to say hi and thank you myself for, for coming here. This is an awesome crowd and an awesome venue. I'm super excited to be here. We have, uh, if you want to be on deck, uh, we're going to be, uh, we're going to see how fast and how much time you have. Ella can figure out a lapel mic. We're going to do this. Was, we had a guinea pig. I'm sorry, Mark, but uh, we figured out lapel mics are going to work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand. No, thank you for going first. Nobody has to. No, that was awesome. I appreciate it. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, uh, we are a community here, right? So as much as I would love to be somebody who puts on monthly events, which is awesome, uh, that is not the, the, the sole purpose here. The sole purpose is to really come together and be a community, right? To, to talk to each other, to network with each other, to figure out who else is in Akron doing the cool stuff on the web, and that's that's our focus. So uh, while we're not at these monthly events, and, and we will, of course, continue them, this will be our last formal monthly event, 20 whatever year it is. And uh, we'll have socials in the, for the rest of the month, like, like Dave said, we'll, we'll continue to, to do that. But we, we chat offline all the time, right? So we're on Slack. If you don't know what Slack is, it's a chat room ask type application that everyone has at this point, so know about Slack. Uh, if you go to launchleague.org and sign up, we do have other communities, right? So in the Akron area, there's front end development, which is awesome, and, and this is a great community. And thank you all for coming out again. But there's marketing, there's design, there's there's other uh, there's virtual reality, which is super cool. So uh, if you join us on Slack, not only do you have a chance to talk with your peers about front end development, but uh, like my, myself, I, I asked a question on the marketing channel today and got some quick responses of stuff that I never would have been able to even Google. So uh, there's fun stuff there. So please join us on uh, Slack at, again, launchleague.org. You sign up there and you'll get notified about our other communities and an invite to our Slack channel. So uh, without further ado, I will, uh, does, it, does it work? Did we, did we work it out? Are we going to flip it on? Testing? Is that working? One, two. Any better? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Perfect. Ooh. You got a ten, Fine. <laughs> here's Dave. Okay. okay, I'm gonna step over here so I don't have to. I got this over here. Um, so I'm Dave Camito, uh, full stack developer. Um, sounds like there's some pretty new and trendy things we're gonna talk about today. Uh, I'm probably gonna be a little more uh, old-fashioned with Drupal here, um, but it's what I know. Uh, so I'll go into some detail about it. Um, so uh, as uh, Drupal's a concept management system. Um, high level view, why would you use a content management system? Uh, primarily, uh, my experience is with uh, uh, creative uh, uh, creative firms. So most any given client that we have wants to be able to manage their content. So uh, content uh, management systems give you that mechanism. But also, um, regardless of that, you can use it as just uh, some kind of fundamental uh, functionality. Uh, you might just use it for mail to forms or for your uh, user authentication or just anything that you would need a general CRUD interface for. Uh, that's one of the, the applications that I use right now is we're, uh, it's not really a traditional uh, website, it's more just a web application. Um, so uh, the general uh, versus, uh, Drupal is about the second most popular uh, content management system. Uh, WordPress is by far the most popular. Um, center there is Joomla. And uh, it's still probably about the third. Uh, Magento is primarily a uh, e-commerce system, uh, and then .NET New is probably like maybe the number four. Magento has gone through in there, kind of an odd order. Right? Um, so some of the pros of WordPress is it's really lightweight, uh, very easy to uh, put on most any given uh, uh, hosting environment. Uh, you can actually very easily purchase uh, WordPress hosting, uh, WP Engine, I think WordPress.com. Uh, give you some options there. Uh, Drupal has it, uh, I don't know if it's quite as, I've never used it, uh, it's called uh, Acquia. Um, I think it's uh, maybe a little more expensive than WordPress too, but uh, I can't really speak too much of that. Um, but uh, some of the great things about WordPress are definitely uh, out-of-the-box templates are really nice. Um, pretty much if you're just looking to get something quick and nice looking for any given client, that's going to be a good option for you. Um, and also it's probably, because it's so popular, it's a lot of uh, great support out there because there's probably not much excuse to not be able to find someone that knows how to do what you're trying to do. Um, uh, some of the downsides is it's because it's so popular, it's a big target. Uh, my most experience that I've had with WordPress is cleaning up hacks because you just slap in an old uh, contact form and then there's a cross-site uh, scripting attack. Uh, so then you just have to go in and clean up some files and uh, 
upgrade the, uh, the contacts, which is pretty easy to do. Uh, Joomla, uh, it's a bit old fashioned. Um, it's still out there and it still does, it's a little bit more robust than uh, WordPress. Um, support's still there. Uh, I can't speak to it, but supposedly it's very good on e commerce and social networking uh, applications. Um, in fact, the first three, they're all born out of just blogging tools that they've all pretty much evolved into general uh, website work. So there's sort of a, there's a bit of a disconnect as they've grown um, to, for them to come up with solutions that think a little more like just the standard website versus post an article, post an article, post an article. Um, Magento, uh, very, it's primarily e-commerce, um, so it's got great options for most any kind of inventory logic or you know options or attribute selections you can think of. Um, it's kind of then content management second. Uh, I did a little exploring with it uh, when I was looking to do like a reservation system for an existing uh, uh, website. And it was kind of enticing because it could handle some reservations, but then uh, most of the rest of the website functionality kind of had a long way to go. Uh, .NET Nuke, um, it would be nice. Uh, it's a very nice uh, platform, but most every uh, experience I've had with it has been pretty dreadful, mostly because I'm working with old, not updated legacy systems. And uh, in fact, I've got uh, a convent up in Cleveland that's running it. In about every year or so, I get a call, can you help us figure out how to do this? Okay, well, I'm gonna go up and figure out how to do it too. But some of the nice things about it are uh, very easy to, uh, to theme, and uh, also it was really one of the first ones to get the idea of load up a page as an admin. You see it had the they would view it uh, publicly and just click on what you want to edit instead of going into the back end and having this sort of disconnect view for what you're editing. Um, but then the downside of that is they've got a thousand buttons for everything, which is pretty confusing for the nuns. Um, <laughs> and then uh, infinity. I mean. There, to say um, uh, content management systems are a dime a dozen uh, is I'm misspeaking because most of them are free, so it's even cheaper than a dime a dozen. Um, but there's some really cool ones out there. Um, some of the coolest things are anything that can really get that inline editing working, and some of the very small, lighter weight ones do that very well. I can't, of course, think of any on the moment. At the moment. Um, URL here will point to this. Uh, uh, presentation and the, all these are links, the Infinity goes to a pretty interesting uh, website called CMS Critic, and it's a pretty in-depth review of every possible CMS, it's pretty much the database of CMSs, uh, so that was pretty cool, uh, pretty handy. But then in general, uh, there's always this balance with CMSs is, do you want something that's really easy to manage or do you want something that does a lot of stuff? So there's always that, that big balance. Um, so Drupal itself, some of the cons are, can be very slow. Uh, it's very easy to just tack in a thousand modules and not realize how they're slowing it down. Uh, I think about three uh, environments that I've taken over for Drupal, the previous developer just enabled every possible module we thought sounded cool, and gee, I wonder why this isn't working very well. Um, hosting can be a little limiting. Uh, like I said, there's, there's sort of, it's not quite as good on shared environments, it's a little harder to install. Um, but I've experimented a little bit with shared environments that I've done on there. Um, most of what I do is actually just on some cloud servers, uh, which is great because there's uh, uh, Drush is a program, a command line program, that makes it super easy to manage, install, upgrade, and even just say, I've created bash scripts that just regularly upgrade at only security updates. So it's very easy to keep uh, secure when you have it on a uh, cloud server. Um, documentation can be a little spotty, uh, especially with the modules. They're really good about uh, keeping everyone with distributed modules to format them correctly, and that keeps it really easy to, to then uh, update your local systems. But there's not a whole lot of enforcement of decent uh, documentation. So you kind of sometimes they just know don't have any documentation. You got to find where in the admin area this thing even installed, um, and it can be a steep learning curve for uh, custom module development. Um, a lot of times uh, there's uh, with a lot of uh, functionality comes a lot of learning and figuring out. Uh, so there's plenty of uh, support and community support and pretty much you can Google it and find an answer pretty quick, but it, it can take a little more because you kind of have, uh, have to play Google's games a little too much. But the pros, um, it's uh, very robust. There's endless configurations. Basically, if you've seen a website do something, 
Drupal can do it, and for the most part, you can probably have it do it really quickly because someone's already built a module that does it and plays with their modules pretty nicely. Uh, very thorough user permissions logic, uh, that's what really drew us to it a lot, um, is uh, lots of great functionality for, okay, I want to create um, some kind of piece of content and only run strict uh, access to it, or I want to open up access to people actually creating, even anonymous users creating content, uh, but obviously we only want certain uh, functionality of that content to be available. And uh, one of the things I want to talk about here is uh, very comprehensive UI tools for front-end development. Um, one of the things when I first started with Drupal uh, is, uh, you know, Lord. Um, when I first started with Drupal being a full stack developer, uh, I was doing amazingly amount of stuff just in the admin UI, and I was getting a little disappointed, like, oh, we want to do some server-side scripts and uh, database support, but I kind of didn't need to. Uh, I eventually found some good excuses and reasons to use uh, custom development, so I satisfied myself later. Um, so uh, with uh, content types, any given piece of content, this is all fairly common. You probably do this in WordPress and stuff too, uh, but it's all the more emphasized in Drupal. So let's say you want to create uh, a custom event content type. Uh, you can customize what all information you want to collect from either the admin or even a public user. Yeah, uh, very easy to just say, okay, I want a thumbnail, uh, large text, um, some categorization, a uh, list categorization, a list categorized by another piece of content. That's all in out of the box core of Drupal. Uh, and then the views module is really where a lot of the, the ease happens. The views module allows you to create uh, pagination, uh, sortable tables, slideshows of all, any given content type. So you can very easily say, I need a view of uh, uh, events content types, and I just want to show the last five, five most recent events coming up, and just slap that on a, any given page. It's also just, uh, it can uh, CSV export any given uh, piece of content, uh, RSS or even iCal, let's uh, say your uh, uh, events. And that's all just through the UI. Some of the uh, things I've built with Drupal, uh, countless websites. Um, event signup system, uh, kind of going back to that uh, content type, I set up a, a custom content uh, that was just name of the event, date of the event, um, and that was in the description post that so when someone goes to that piece of content, they then create a separate piece of content that attaches to that where anonymous users can enter their name, email address, and then it'll populate another content type, which is the event signup content type, and then creating a view, the admin can go in, see an admin restricted list of everyone that signed up. Um, I, a, Drupal, a Drupal content fit by a, a remote iCal, uh, out-of-the-box feeds module fed from an iCal form uh, creates uh, uh, Drupal event uh, content types. Uh, Instagram hashtag aggregator, that one was great. Uh, that one was all pre-built. Um, the uh, principal of the school wanted uh, his students to be able to uh, Instagram the hashtags. Uh, he then could feed to Instagram API and then moderate uh, Instagram uh, hashtags to populate views-based slideshows. Unfortunately, uh, Instagram changed its rules and you can no longer API to a general hashtag and get a swap of photos, so that one had to go down. Um, student information system is what I'm currently working on. That uh, is using Drupal just as the, uh, basically a web application uh, platform, so I'm not really using it as a traditional web uh, service, I'm using it just for its user authentication, um, permissions logic, uh, and then uh, on top of that, uh, one of the, uh, this one didn't end up having to be HIPAA compliant, but Drupal is probably one of the few uh, HIPAA compliant uh, CMSs. Uh, so uh, it's, it's FERPA compliant, but it's not quite the same thing. A um, couple of uh, expert, uh, uh, experiments that worked with uh, what we were talking about hybrid apps. Uh, I actually did work a little bit with the phone gap module with Cordova. Um, there's a whole uh, module that will just populate a uh, specifically formatted uh, just HTML structure that uh, allows you, that it'll, it'll feed from your Drupal and feed into PhoneGap, uh, and then uh, kind of fed into the RESTful uh, API web services as well. So you can use that. Well, I built a uh, just an experimental Android application that actually communicated with web services uh, and uh, took content and populated content in the internal website. That's pretty much everything.